There are so many good audio products these days, but I have kind of a selection of a few that I'm gonna be using in 2024. I wanna give you what those reasons are for using those. I also wanna let you know that no one is paying or asking for me to use their products here. Um, these are just products that I like and I'm going to be using in the future. Now, a real quick announcement before we get started. Those of you who ordered the Periapt cable, um, quite frankly, <laughs> we got a lot more orders than we thought we would. Periapt actually had to hire outside help in order to fulfill all the orders which is crazy and thank you guys so much thank you so much and in the interest of keeping things open and transparent with you guys we are still taking orders but there is a few week lead time for it i do think it's worth the wait but i just want to let you know what to expect if you do put in an order you can find a link to that down below thanks guys All right, so for headphones, I currently have a five headphone system. We're gonna start cheapest and go to the most expensive. Now, the one headphone that I have here that it doesn't go with the split cable system is my gaming headphone, which is the trusty PC38X. I've had this for three years. It's showing quite a bit of wear at this point, but honestly, it still sounds great and it's hard for me to justify upgrading. Honestly, things like the Odyssey Maxwell are kind of turning my head a little bit, and I'm considering getting one of those just for the, the wireless convenience factor, but that shouldn't reflect in any way that I'm unhappy with this headphone. Honestly, for the price point of these, it's just insanely good, and I really, really enjoy playing games with this, and not only multiplayer games, but also single player games. The immersion factor and the imaging and soundstage potential for footsteps, things like that, is just so good on this headphone. Now, the rest of these are hooked up to the Periop split cable system. This system just connects to the one core cable that's on the amplifier, so I can just unplug one headphone and grab another headphone without having to deal with a bunch of cable mess, which I appreciate. So for the lower range of price for audiophile headphones, man, I, I keep coming back to the HD 600. They are just a really good reference point. Outside of vocals and tonality, I don't really think that they're the best at anything. It's not really the best at sound staging. It's not the best at bass response. It's not the best at treble detail. There are a lot of other headphones under a thousand dollars that do really, really, really well for that type of stuff. But what this does do is it gives me a really good understanding and a baseline for how other things are performing. So I'm looking for things to have better bass than this. I'm looking for it to have vocals that are close to this or better. I'm looking for it to have better trouble response, sound staging, stuff like that. It just gives me a reference point to see what can be improved. I also have a Sundara on long-term loan that I don't know that I'll be getting back, uh, but that would also be a good reference planar, for example, at the $300 price point, which this shares. I also think an HC650 or an HC6XX would be a great uh, choice here personally, and I'd be happy to swap with any of those. My personal preference though just goes with the HD600. Okay, now the Aria Organic. Now I'm looking for some of the best headphones at their price tags, and everything that comes in gets compared to it for one reason or another. Sound staging is exceptional. I do think that the sound staging overall is on par with something like an HD800S. It's not as totally wide as the HD800S, but it has an advantage over that headphone of being very tall and big and large in scale and the sounds in the HD800S always felt very small. So I not only prefer that, but I think that that delivery is a bit more believable than the HD800S. The bass response is now better than ever. It's not only incredibly deep now, but it's also got a decent bit of punch. And then the detail potential is really good. There are a couple downsides to this headphone that these resolve. Uh, vocals are not the absolute best in my opinion. Even a headphone like the HD600, I think are kind of a better vocal performing headphone, but that headphone doesn't have the detail, the sound staging, the bass response. There's a lot of advantages to this, but vocals isn't one of them. So yeah, I think this is just a very good comparative headphone that I look for other headphones to beat. Outside of tuning preference, it is hard to beat this headphone on a technical level. Empyrean 2 and Diana MR. In the full comparison video, I kind of break down the differences and why they're they're so ebb and flow with each other. Like one is really good at sub bass, the other's really good at mid bass. One is really good at vocals and the other is really good at sound staging. And like, it just kind of goes back and forth. But ultimately, I think that each quality of these, whether it's the sound staging, whether it's the detail retrieval, whether it's the tonality, whether it's the mid bass response, together, these headphones give me kind of the best of any of the headphones that are out there right now. So they give me a comparative point to reference any headphone at any price against. So if I want to compare sub-bass performance, well, I'm going to slap on the Diana MR 
listen to it for a bit and then try the other headphone. If I wanna to listen to presentation and sound staging and scale, I'm gonna to listen to the Empyrean and then I'm gonna to listen to whatever I'm comparing against. And not only that, and hopefully I don't sound selfish here, but I just, I fucking like listening to these headphones. Like they're just so good, they're so enjoyable. So these are sticking around and these are kind of like the ultimate reference points for me right now. Now these are the amplifiers that I'm currently going to be running for 2024. This might change, but as of right now, this is kind of the, I guess the reference point. On the bottom, we have the A70 Pro and D70 Pro stack. One of the main reasons for this is that it's just a very, very versatile system. There's tons of inputs, tons of outputs on the D70, and the A70 Pro is just a really good sounding and super powerful headphone amplifier. Like it's just really insane. And they've got the nice displays with the VU meter and the, the FFT and like, it just, I don't know. It's a it's a good little stack for me uh, for sort of a reference point for about a thousand bucks for both. And then there's this guy, which is an absolute beast of a mobile amplifier and DAC. Uh, this thing is very cool. I'm still working on the video for it. I, I promise I'll get there. If you don't know what this is, please look into it. It's it's really freaking sick. I use it a lot for IEMs. Like there's the new Dunu IEM that I'm gonna be reviewing, which I also think is very good. Uh, and I'm using it a lot on this. I don't wanna to spoil too much about this, but this thing is freaking sick. Uh, it's just awesome. For subjectivity, I'm using the WA-7. I just really like the general sound quality of it. The build quality is also amazing. The device itself is so heavy that when you plug in a cable, it doesn't move. And when it's on top, that means that these lighter DAC and amps down here also don't move. So I can just plug in anything I want and nothing moves at all, which is nice. Speaking of connectivity, let's talk about the cables I'm using for the DAC and amp and the headphone system. So the headphone system, I've talked about it before, but I'll just briefly go over it. The benefit to this split system is that you can take one headphone, unplug it here, not have this huge cable mess and plug in a different headphone without having to wrap up a bunch of cables, and now you can just switch from one cable to the other. It's very convenient, very quick. This is a system that me and Perry App Co developed. You can find a link down below. Now regarding the back, I'm using these very clean, uh, short cables. The RCAs are from a brand called CESS. I totally found it on Amazon. I don't really know much about this brand, but the cable quality is actually really good and they were only like 10 bucks. This plugs into the WA7 and I just, put it on RCA so I only had to have one USB cable plugged into the D70 and then that goes to both the A70 Pro and the WA7. Now these red and blue short XLR cables, I don't actually know the brand. I think they were also pretty cheap. I will try to find them in my purchase history and I will link them down below as well. Same theme, like I just want it to be really clean and minimal back there so that it's organized. Then I just run the required power cables and the USB connection and that's pretty much it. All right, when it comes to studio monitors, for me, it's basically Genelec versus everything else. This is a Genelec G1. It's the cheapest and small speaker that they make. It's still $350 a piece. So the pair of these for three inch monitors are $700, which sounds crazy, but I legitimately think that these are superior to basically any other desktop speaker, regardless of size at that same price. They may not have as much bass as something like Vanity T0 Pluses, but the sonic characteristics, the precision of the sound is really, in my opinion, unbeatable. When it comes to small speakers like this, I've tried a lot of stuff, a lot of small studio monitors, a lot of other options like those Vanity T0s, these new Fios, these new BMRs, and truthfully, none of them come close. So I won't be switching anytime soon. My goal is to eventually get the ones from Genelec. Couple reasons why. Uh, Genelec is a very well-researched company. They are incredibly on point for measurements. Even these small three-inch monitors have incredibly good measurements and they use quality materials. So take these two, for example. These both use an aluminum housing, but when you pick them up and when you feel them, you can feel that they're actually built quite a bit differently in terms of quality. And you can actually hear this as well. So if I knock on the side of this, pretty inert. It doesn't have a ringing, it doesn't have a hollowness to it. Whereas if I knock on the side of this, you can hear it's got a lot more kind of resonant potential in the cabinet. And when it comes to Genelec as a brand, 
all of their speakers that are of this line, all of their the ones, they're all made with a solid aluminum cabinet, a lot like this. Now you notice that I took the feet off of these and I just used the screw at the bottom to screw into these custom brackets. Now these are just a three inch woofer, so they don't vibrate a ton, but not enough to really make like wall resonance an issue like it would be with a bigger speaker. These sound perfectly fine on the, the wall brackets that I've, I've mounted. It's just an easy way to get them up ear level and off of the desk. So for me, I'd have to run across a pretty freaking good small desktop monitor to replace these. Otherwise I'm sticking with these through 2024. Now, when it comes to IEMs, if I'm honest, it's kind of hard to just pick a couple of favorites and the IEM market moves so quickly that I don't know if there's a real advantage to having a kind of a staple because it seems like every year there's at least five or six really, really like hyped, really good, kind of new standard IEMs that come out that really uh, kind of stir up the price bracket that they're in. Some are cheaper, under 50 bucks, some are under 200, some are under like 3000. It just depends on the market. And these are obviously a lot cheaper and easier to make than a full-size headphone is, and they're always coming out with new ones. So I think for me, it's less important to have like a standard for IEMs, and it's more important to be fluid as a reviewer in this space. That's, I think, more important just to me. Now, it doesn't mean that current IEMs are bad or anything like that. They're really, really good. In fact, at certain price points, I think that IEMs are better than some headphones, which is crazy. But I do have a couple recommendations. The first one is like a, a hack. I don't know, um, like a little life thing. Get a tackle box for your IEMs and your tips, honestly. Like, uh, just store them in here. That's what I do. It just keeps everything organized. You have your different tips. If you really want to get it into it, you can label it and stuff. That's like a very cheap, easy way to visualize everything you got. I personally like that. Now the in-ear headphone that gets the absolute most amount of hours out of me, AirPods Pros 2. And they're just super convenient. They sound pretty good. They have cool things like the Dolby Atmos surround sound stuff. Now I do dip into that occasionally, but as an iPhone user, I just can't shake the convenience of this. I use these for the gym. The battery life is excellent. Um, they're just really great as an all rounder. Now, when it comes to IEMs that have more of an audiophile sound, a few recommendations. Under hundred bucks, I just got the Moondrop Aria 2s. Um, they're pretty good. They're a solid upgrade over the Aria 1s, I think. Um, I also am keeping the Don Pro inside this little case here as sort of like a mobile setup. When it comes to higher end IEMs, I have a couple like reference points and a couple things that are really good that are on the horizon for me. A couple of them are the Dark Saber from Moondrop and the Dunu um, kind of headphones collaboration IEM, which I'll be talking about pretty shortly. For the ultra high end stuff, I have uh, used these for years actually, which are the Fur M5s and these are extremely expensive. A couple of those are what I will be using in 2024, but uh, unlike headphones, I don't really have a specific intention and purpose with each and every headphone. Um, it's kind of just like seeing where the market goes. I think that's the game that I wanna play for IEMs.